regardless of whether or not they believe in God. Most scientists agree the cosmic code appears to exist. Everything in the universe is determined by the fundamental forces of nature. The strengths of those forces are characterized by numbers called fundamental constants that are so sensitive that if they changed by just a little bit, the universe as we know it wouldn't be here. For example, if the rate of expansion of the universe right after the Big Bang had changed by one part in a quintillion, a quintillion is one with 18 zeros after it, the universe would continue to expand or collapse back on itself, and none of this would be possible. To illustrate just how small a number one part in a quintillion is, imagine all the grains of sand on this beach. In fact, imagine all the grains of sand in all the world's beaches. That number's probably somewhere around a quintillion. In this analogy, if all that sand represented the rate of expansion of the universe right after the Big Bang, how many grains of sand would I need to add or subtract to wreck the universe? Just one grain, one in a quintillion. That's how precise things had to be for us to be here. But even though the Big Bang was perfectly calibrated, intelligent life would never have formed if matter had spread evenly across the universe. Had it been perfectly smooth, then there wouldn't be any clumps which would gravitate and form stars and galaxies. So we needed slight irregularities in the distribution of matter in the universe. Had those irregularities been much smaller, stars and galaxies wouldn't have formed. Had they been much larger, everything would have collapsed to form black holes. But even with the right distribution of matter throughout the universe, life would still never have formed without a complex series of processes inside stars that converted helium and hydrogen into heavier elements like carbon that form the basis of all living beings. Some of those stars explode, providing raw material with which to form new stars, planets, and ultimately life. Had the laws of physics been a little bit different or even if the physical constants had been a little bit different from what they really are, this process of nuclear fusion and the explosion of stars might not have been possible, and we wouldn't be here discussing it. I don't know a single scientist who would disagree with the statement that the world is exceedingly ingenious. Not just mathematical, not just beautiful, not just elegant, but the manifestation of something truly extraordinary. It looks in some respects as though our universe is rather special. We know the universe allowed our emergence, but it's quite easy to imagine a universe with slightly different properties, in which neither we nor anything as complicated as us could exist. We can imagine, as it were, turning the knobs which were set up at the time of the Big Bang to determine how it expanded and what it was made of. And if we turn the knobs very slightly, we find that we would end up with a universe that would not be so propitious for the emergence of life. Take gravity, perhaps the most familiar of the laws of nature. Its value determines how much things are attracted to each other. From us being stuck to the Earth, to the Earth circling our Sun, to the stars held in place in remote galaxies billions of light years away. Just the tiniest adjustment to the value of gravity in a computer simulation of the Big Bang, and our universe doesn't emerge at all. For example, if gravity were very strong, then anything as big as us would get crushed. If there were no gravity at all, then no stars would be able to form because they're held together by gravity. No planets either. 
and the other laws are equally fine-tuned. Any slight adjustment to their value, and we would never exist. There is no known reason why these values should be set as they are, yet they do seem to be fine-tuned to allow our creation. To some of us, not all, to some of us, it looks like we have to live with the idea that the constants of nature, the laws of nature, everything that we know about, somehow was influenced by our own existence. This is something which physicists hate the idea of. Most physicists want the world to be controlled by pure mathematics, not by our own existence. For a while, mainstream cosmologists were content that once we understood better the underlying reason for the laws being set as they are, fine-tuning would no longer seem so mystical and would once again fall within the realms of physics and mathematics. The general view of this for most physicists is that these fine-tunings are largely accidental, uh, that the constants of nature are determined by some mathematical principles which have nothing whatever to do with our existence. Impersonal, mathematical, and uh, we were just incredibly lucky that that mathematics happened to, give, happened to give rise to a universe with all this kind of fine tuning, just precisely so. And so the anthropic principle existed as an interesting but eccentric theory. But then quite unexpectedly, a completely new law of nature was discovered and our universe relied on this law being so precisely tuned that it seemed no rational theory would ever explain it. Our universe seems to be defined by a set of numbers which in some sense look special. If we had different numbers we would end up with a sterile universe. People react to this seeming coincidence in a number of ways. You could say it's the outcome of some kind of design or providence. We could say it's a brute fact we have to accept because these numbers might be determined by some theory which we haven't yet discovered. For a while it was possible to believe that the laws of nature were not so precisely set as to require the hand of a creator. But then a completely new fundamental property of the universe was discovered. An anti-gravity force present in space itself. It is called the cosmological constant. And when cosmologists calculated its effect on the evolution of the universe, they realized it had to be very finely tuned indeed. The fine tunings, how fine, how fine tuned are they? Most of them are 1% sort of things. In other words, if a thing is 1% uh, different, uh, everything is bad. And the physicist could say, maybe those are just luck. On the other hand, this cosmological constant is tuned to one part and 10 to the 120, 120 decimal places. Nobody thinks that's accidental. That is not a reasonable idea, that something is tuned to 120 decimal places just by accident. That's the most extreme example of fine-tuning. No force in the history of cosmology has ever been discovered to be that finely tuned. The cosmological constant needs to be set to one part in a trillion, 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 trillion. Otherwise the universe would be so drastically different that it would be impossible for us to evolve. That the cosmological constant arrived at such a tiny value by chance seemed to be out of the question. But the alternative explanation was also impossible to contemplate. Physicists uh, did not want to accept the idea that the laws of nature might be controlled by, uh, by well, the benevolence of nature. There should be no reason why 
the luck should just have it that we can exist. It's too much, it's, it's a stretch, it's much too far to stretch. It seemed that hidden in the laws of nature was a value so precise that it was impossible to deny that our universe was designed. But a designed universe requires the existence of a designer, a notion that even the anthropic scientists did not want to entertain. The scientists were between a rock and a hard place. Their own discoveries were pointing them towards an intelligent designer. This is a dislike of mixing religion into physics. I think they were somewhat afraid that if it was admitted that the reason the world is the way it is uh, has to do with our own existence, that that could be hijacked by the creationists, by the intelligent designers. And of course what they would say is, yes, we always told you so. There is a benevolent somebody way up high in the universe who created the universe exactly so that we could live. I think physicists shrank at the idea of uh, getting involved in such things. <laughs>